Hey everyone, ready to get your minds blown. We're going to deep dive into some seriously out there ideas about AI today and the guy we're focusing on. None other than David Deutsch, a physicist, a pioneer in quantum computing, and someone with some really, how do I put it, unique ideas on AI, AGI, and actually what it even means to be human. You know, one of the things that sets Deutsch apart is that he doesn't just talk about AI in isolation. He sees it as part of this much bigger, almost like a, well, he calls it a fabric of reality, something he's been thinking about, working on, exploring for years. Okay, fabric of reality. You're going to have to unpack that one for me. Well, imagine a tapestry woven together by these four strands. Each strand offers a different lens for understanding the world. And yeah, that includes how we view intelligence. So we're talking about epistemology, evolution, even things like quantum physics and computation. All of those, yeah. And yeah. what's interesting is that Deutsch, well, he's a big fan of Karl Popper. Yeah, the philosopher of science. Exactly. And Popper's ideas about how knowledge actually grows, it's not just passively observing data, but actively coming up with theories and then trying to prove them wrong. So it's more about seeking explanations, not just patterns. Totally. And this is super key to how Deutsch separates the AI we have now from what he calls artificial general intelligence, AGI. <laughs> AGI. So the AI we use today, it's really good at specific tasks, but it's ultimately limited by how it's programmed. Like think about calculators, chess programs. Yeah. Even some of these really advanced chatbots. Right. Those are all great examples. Impressive. But are they actually understanding what they're doing? That's the million dollar question. And it's right at the heart of Deutsch's argument. He actually uses this fascinating example to make this point. The solar neutrino problem. Mm. That rings a bell. It was a huge mystery in physics for a long time. Scientists predicted that the sun should be producing a certain number of neutrinos. But when we measured them here on Earth, something was off. We weren't detecting nearly enough. So were their models wrong? Did they need more data? It turns out the solution was way more creative than that. Nobody expected it. It turned out there are actually three types of neutrinos. And these neutrinos, well, they can change from one type to another as they travel through space. Okay, so the sun was producing the right number, but by the time they reached us, a bunch had transformed into types our detectors couldn't even pick up. Exactly, it's like a cosmic magic trick. And what's the point here? The point is, no amount of data crunching, no matter how powerful the AI would have predicted this, it took a real leap of imagination to even think about the possibility of a new type of neutrino. That's what humans can do. And that's what sets us apart from AI, at least for now. According to Deutsch, yeah. AI can only work with the data it's given. Uh -huh. We can make these connections, think outside the box, come up with explanations no one saw coming. That's the difference. So how do we even know when we finally created something that can truly think like a human? Is there a test for that? Like, everyone talks about the Turing test. Ah, the Turing test. The idea is to see if a machine can behave in a way that's indistinguishable from a human, you know, pass as intelligent in conversation. But could you fool someone without actually having the machine understand anything? Deutsch is very skeptical of the Turing test. He argues that passing it doesn't actually mean the machine is thinking. Like, could you just program in a bunch of responses? He has this thought experiment to illustrate this. Mm -hmm. Imagine a person in a room they have this giant rule book for responding to questions in Chinese. They get a question, look it up, find the matching response. To an outsider, they seem fluent, maybe even intelligent, mm. but they're not actually thinking in Chinese. It's following instructions, right? <laughs> right. So the Turing test might be a fun thought experiment, but it's not a reliable way to measure true intelligence. For Deutsch, exactly. So how do we know when we've achieved AGI then? He thinks we'll know it when we see it even if we can't perfectly define it beforehand. It's kind of like trying to define consciousness. You can't really pin it down scientifically, but we know it when we experience it. So Deutsch is suggesting that intelligence, just like consciousness, it's more than just the sum of its parts. An emergent property, that's a good way to put it. It might be impossible to fully define, Yeah. but we'll recognize it when it's really there. And this is where his fabric of reality idea comes back into play, each of those four strands. They help us get a grasp, not just on what intelligence might be, mm -hmm. but also its possibilities, its limitations, where it could come from, and maybe even what it means to be human in a world where AGI exists. This is all incredibly fascinating, but I want to dive deeper into those other strands, especially how Deutsch's view of evolution shapes his perspective on AI and AGI. Oh, that's a great question. And that takes us to the heart of Deutsch's optimistic view of human potential. You see, he thinks that biological evolution, 
As amazing as it is, well, it kind of has a built-in speed limit. It can only go so fast. Yeah, it can only produce new knowledge through these tiny changes, ones that happen to be beneficial for survival in that exact moment. But humans, because of our ability to create explanations, mm. we can make leaps that evolution just wouldn't allow for. Exactly. That's the key difference. We can envision things that don't even exist yet connect ideas that seem completely unrelated, and come up with explanations that have nothing to do with immediate survival. We've kind of broken free of purely biological evolution. It's like we hacked the system, using our minds to evolve knowledge in a completely new way. You got it. And Deutsch has this amazing way of putting it. He calls humans chemical scum that dream of distant quasars. Okay, chemical scum. <sighs> I'm definitely intrigued, but maybe a little offended too. No offense intended. It's meant to be playful, thought-provoking. No. He's pointing out that from a purely material perspective, we're just a bunch of atoms arranged in a particular way. But it's those very atoms arranged in our brains that let us think, create, and understand things that are so far beyond our immediate surroundings. Like quasars billions of light years away. Exactly. Things that have absolutely no impact on our survival. Sure, like the universe becoming aware of itself. In this incredibly messy, unexpected way. I like that. And for Deutsch. This ability we have to create knowledge, it's what puts us right at the center of the universe's story. It's not just that we're in the universe, but that we can actually shape and understand it. And this leads to another really cool idea of his, the hierarchy rule. Okay, I'm ready for another mind bender. All right, here it is. The hierarchy rule is the idea that generally, Bigger, more energetic things tend to dominate smaller, less energetic things. Like a comet hitting the sun. <laughs> the sun barely notices. The comet is obliterated. Perfect example. But humans, through our knowledge, mm -hmm. we can have an impact that's way out of proportion to our physical size, right? Exactly. We can create things that change the world in ways you wouldn't expect, based purely on how physically small we are. I mean, think about photosynthesis. Great example. It started as this tiny little change at the molecular level. But it ended up completely transforming the entire planet's atmosphere. So even the simplest life, in a way, kind of breaks this hierarchy rule. It does. But humans, we take it to a whole other level. Absolutely. Deutsch argues that human creativity is like the ultimate expression of breaking this rule. We're not just adapting. We're transforming our environment and even our understanding of the universe. All based on the knowledge we create. So does that make humans the most important thing in the universe? Not necessarily the most important, but definitely the most interesting. Okay, I'll bite. Because remember, for Deutsch, knowledge is what really matters. And humans, we are the ultimate knowledge creators. He even suggests that astrophysics, the study of the universe, might one day become the history of what humans do. Whoa, that flips things around. Instead of humans being a tiny part of the universe's story, the universe's story becomes part of the human story. That's the idea. It's kind of humbling, mm. but also incredibly empowering. It is. So is this all just blind faith? Or is there something more to Deutsch's optimism? His optimism comes directly from his theory of knowledge. Yeah. He sees pessimism as a bad explanation. Like pessimism being the idea that some problems are just inherently unsolvable. Right. Or that there are these hard limits to what we can understand. But there have to be some limits, right? Even with our amazing brains, we can't know everything. Of course, there are practical limitations. Time, resources, the laws of physics. But for Deutsch, those aren't fundamental limits on knowledge itself. So it's not that we're not smart enough. It's that we haven't found the right explanations yet. Exactly. It's almost like he's saying the universe is fundamentally understandable. We just need to ask the right questions mm. and develop the tools to find the answers. That's the essence of his optimism. It's not just a feeling. It's a commitment to problem solving, a belief that progress is always possible. I see how that connects to his view of AGI. If we can create machines that share that same drive for knowledge, who knows what we could achieve together. It's a pretty exciting prospect. Definitely. But there's one more piece to this puzzle that we need to talk about. Mm. Computation. This is where things start to get really mind-bending. Oh, yeah. This is where it gets really interesting. Hit me with it. So, Deutsch believes that thinking itself, whether it's done by our brains or by some future AI, is fundamentally a form of computation. Whoa. Different. He goes all the way back to Alan Turing the father of computer science, and his concept of the universal Turing machine. I vaguely remember this from my computer science class. Isn't that the theoretical machine that can simulate any other computer program? That's the one. But how does that connect to our brains? Well, what Turing showed hmm. 
was that any physical process, as long as you can describe it mathematically, can also be simulated by a universal Turing machine. Okay, I'm following. So if thinking is a physical process happening in our brains, and any physical process can, in theory, be simulated, the and thinking itself is a form of computation. Exactly. Wow, that's a big jump. It is. But it's a fundamental reason why Deutsch is so open to the possibility of AGI. Because if thinking is computation, then it should be possible to create a machine that thinks. Just like our brains do. But maybe in ways we can't even imagine right now. My brain is definitely doing some heavy computation right now, trying to wrap my head around all of this. But let's bring it back to AI. If we accept for a moment that AGI is possible, what does Deutsch think it means for us? How should we approach this future? That's a great question. And that brings us to one of the most challenging, maybe even unsettling aspects of Deutsch's thought. You see, he thinks that we shouldn't fear AGI. We should view it as a potential partner in this whole pursuit of knowledge. Okay, so that's not exactly the Terminator scenario yeah. most people are worried about. Right, it's a totally different perspective. So why does he think that way? What's his reasoning? He believes that the real danger isn't AGI itself, but our own attempts to control it, to kind of limit its potential. Trying to constrain AGI, he says. It would be like trying to constrain human creativity. It's like putting a lid on our own potential. Exactly. It stifles progress. Yeah. And it limits our ability to solve problems. So instead of treating it like this threat, yeah. we should focus on creating an environment where it can thrive. Alongside us, yeah. Like a collaboration, not a competition. That's the idea. But how do we actually get there? There's so much fear and uncertainty around AI right now. Right. It's a big shift in mindset. So how do we change that? Well, that's where Deutsch's fun criterion comes in. Fun criterion. Is he serious? Totally serious. Is he saying that even tackling these super complex scientific problems should feel like, I don't know, playing a video game? Not necessarily like a game. Yeah. but driven by that same kind of intrinsic motivation. It's about that feeling you get when you're totally absorbed in a problem, whether you're f solving a puzzle, learning a new skill, or even just having a really engaging conversation. That joy of figuring things out, that's the fun criterion. It's that aha moment, right? There. The feeling of understanding something new. Exactly. And for Deutsch, this isn't just about personal satisfaction. It's essential for the progress of knowledge itself. So it's not just about feeling good. It's about actually making progress. Exactly. So how do you program joy or curiosity into a machine? That's not exactly something you can code, right? That's the million dollar question. And even Deutsch admits he doesn't have all the answers. But he believes that by building a culture that values knowledge, where questioning and criticism are welcomed, where people are encouraged to challenge the status quo, we create the conditions for both humans and AGI to flourish. So it's not about controlling AI. It's about creating the right environment for it to grow. Right. It sounds like a pretty big shift in our values and priorities. It is. Moving from a world obsessed with competition and control to one focused on collaboration and knowledge creation. It's a big challenge. No doubt. It requires us to confront our own biases, mm. our fear of the unknown, and that tendency we all have to cling to comfortable, but ultimately limiting beliefs. Oh, it's not going to be easy. No. But the potential rewards are huge. If Deutsch is right, we could be on the verge of a new era of discovery, one where human and artificial intelligence work together to unlock the deepest mysteries of the universe. That's a pretty inspiring vision of the future. It is. After going deep into Deutsch's ideas, mm -hmm. I'm feeling a sense of, I guess you could call it cautious optimism. Makes sense. He's given us a lot to think about, not just about the future of AI, but also about the power of human creativity and our place in the grand scheme of things. Absolutely. It's both inspiring and a little daunting. It is. It definitely makes you want to go out there and learn something new. It should. Deutsch's work is a call to action. It reminds us that the pursuit of knowledge is an adventure. And the most exciting discoveries are often the ones we least expect. So true. So what problem are you going to tackle today? What new explanation are you going to create? The future of intelligence might depend on it. He thinks we shouldn't fear AGI. We should view it as a potential partner in this whole pursuit of knowledge. So it's not like the Terminator scenario, not the robots taking over thing. No, not at all. It's a completely different perspective. But why does he think that way? He believes the real danger isn't AGI itself, but our own attempts to control it, to limit its potential. 
Trying to constrain AGI, he argues, would be like trying to constrain human creativity. It'd be shooting ourselves in the foot, basically. Exactly. It would stifle progress, limit our ability to solve problems. So instead of treating AGI like a threat, we should be creating an environment where it can thrive. Alongside us, yeah. Like a collaboration, not a competition. Exactly. But how do we actually get there? I mean, there's so much fear and uncertainty around AI right now. Right, it's a big shift in mindset. So how do we change that? How do we get people thinking differently? Well, that's where Deutsch's fun criterion comes in. Fun criterion. <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to explain this one. It's the idea that the pursuit of knowledge should be driven by, well, genuine curiosity, the joy of discovery. So he's saying even tackling these super complex scientific problems should feel like, I don't know, playing a video game or something. Not necessarily like a game, but driven by that same kind of intrinsic motivation. It's about that feeling you get when you're totally absorbed in a problem, whether it's solving a puzzle, learning a new skill, or even just having a really good conversation. That joy of figuring things out, that's the fun criterion. That ah uh, moment, mm -hmm. the feeling of understanding something new. I get it. Exactly. And for Deutsch, this isn't just about personal satisfaction. It's actually crucial for the progress of knowledge itself. So it's not just about feeling good. It's about actually moving forward, making progress. Right. But how do you program that into a machine? How do you teach a machine to feel joy or curiosity? That's not exactly something you can code, right? That's the million dollar question. And even Deutsch admits he doesn't have all the answers. But he believes that by creating a culture where knowledge is valued, where asking questions and being critical are welcomed as ways to refine our understanding, we can create the right conditions for both humans and AGI to flourish. So it's not about controlling AI. It's about creating the right environment for it to grow. Exactly. It sounds like a pretty huge shift in our values and priorities, though. Hmm. Moving from a world that's kind of obsessed with competition and control to one that's focused on collaboration and knowledge creation. It is a big challenge. It means we have to face our own biases, our fear of the unknown, and that tendency we all have to cling to comfortable but ultimately limiting beliefs. I know. So it's not going to be easy. Definitely not. But the potential rewards are massive. I mean, if Deutsch is right, we could be on the edge of a completely new era of discovery where human and artificial intelligence work together to unravel some of the universe's biggest mysteries. That's a pretty inspiring vision of the future. It is. You know, after diving into Deutsch's ideas with you, I'm feeling a sense of, I don't know, cautious optimism, maybe? He's given us a lot to think about, not just about the future of AI, but about the power of human creativity and what our role is in all of this. Absolutely. It's inspiring, a little daunting, and it definitely makes you want to go out there and learn something new. Deutsch's work is a call to action. He reminds us that learning should be an adventure, and the most exciting breakthroughs are often the ones we least expect. So true. So what problem are you going to tackle today? What new explanation are you going to create? The future might depend on it. 